All right, there it is, your house and mine, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Everybody's fighting for that house, right? Of course, it's going to be a downgrade if Donald Trump wins, but <laughs> that's okay. He'll put up some gold and stuff. All right, so the closer we get to this, a lot of the candidates are talking about math because clearly Donald Trump and the Republican side is way ahead. And if you look at the delegates, Hillary Clinton is way ahead as well, particularly in the super delegates. So we are here to talk more about this and how the math will work or not work. Barry Nussbaum is here, and he uh, knows his stuff. Good morning. You look great. Oh, great. Great to be with How, you, How'd Dan. that clock thing go for you? Uh, I figured it out eventually. Yeah, you figured it out? <laughs> yeah, right. And well, two you... different clocks telling me what time it was. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. There's a lot of people going through that this morning. All right, let's talk about this delegate count. Sure. Let's start on the Republican side. And obviously Trump has a, a large portion of them right now. But you hear the candidates saying the math is still there. Is it? It is until Tuesday night, Dan. Tuesday, as the second Super Tuesday, has so many delegates at stake. The big question is, what happens by the end of the night? If Ohio and Florida go to Trump, he's got the road right to the convention in Cleveland and probably first ballot nomination. Uh, he's way ahead in Florida. And uh, Ohio is uh, neck and neck right now between him and Kasich. Yeah, and of course, when we say Ohio and Florida, we're talking about home states for both of those candidates. Correct. Kasich's the governor of Ohio. And he's uh, Marco Rubio is from Florida. So it would be a true embarrassment if they lost their own home states, and that pretty much would be pull the plug time. Yeah, I, I think so. I think if Marco can't carry Florida, and right now, Dan, it looks like he's not going to, uh, his candidacy is over. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes talk uh, about where to move his support. Um, but there's really no way for him to go forward after Tuesday if he, as you said, can't win his own state. That's really bad for a national candidate yeah. uh, if, the, if the home people don't want you. <laughs> he, that is true. I mean, that's a pretty clear sign. And he, you know, I mean, he was doing very well until the attacks happened and, and he decided to play Donald Trump's game and it backfired on him. And then suddenly Marco Rubio sort of disappears because a lot of people were saying that he was one of the strongest, certainly as, the, as they say, the, uh, the conventional wisdom, the, uh, the establishment, if you will. Yeah, he was the establishment candidate, uh, the only one left, and probably after Tuesday there won't be one with yeah. the exception of Kasich, who, as far as I'm concerned, has been running for vice president for a long time. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> but that is possible. That is possible. That's not a bad job. No, it's uh, a great, it's the best job on earth. You yeah. get all the benefits without any of the responsibility. And then you're the heir apparent. And then you are the heir apparent. Exactly. Re ready to step in like it has happened so many times. So on the Republican side, you need how many to get you nail need, it? Uh, you need 1237. And the Democratic side really doesn't matter. Uh, and the reason is, is because it's, it's a foregone gone conclusion Hillary's going to take it. The math is super important, Dan, on the Republican side, because it's going to come right down to really, really close at the convention whether or not it's a first ballot. And if it's not, then it's an open convention, and then it's a free-for-all. And then it's like old school time. Yeah, then it gets really fun to talk about. Then it's like old school the way it used to be. People right. don't realize primaries are a fairly new thing in American democratic politics. In the old days, uh, the delegates were selected uh, by, the, by the parties, and then they went to the convention, and they fought it out there. Now, we sort of have a way to elect our delegates, and the delegates are pledged for the first ballot. So if he doesn't make it, then they're released. <laughs> and then the fighting and the trading and the deal making start, and then it gets really exciting to watch. Yeah, like you say, it wasn't until really modern history that the candidates were anointed before they went into the convention. Exactly, exactly. The, the, the parties controlled it completely, yeah. and the people got to vote uh, in the election, sort of. I mean, technically, we don't elect the president. We elect the Electoral College, right. which elects the president. Yes, and which some people obviously still have a problem with. If you think back to Gore, Bush, he yeah. actually got the popular vote. Bush got the delegate counts. Yeah, exactly right. And, and that <clears throat> happens once in a while, and it really shows us we're not truly uh, a representative democracy. Uh, we are more of a republic, uh, and that goes not only for Congress, but the way we elect our president. I think it's going to be really, really fun in Cleveland, because what people don't realize is the rules that are going to be set up in the days up to July 18th when the convention opens are going to determine how the delegates move around. See, there's some questions about whether or not uh, Christie's delegates are going to be released and when. Um, 
uh, Carly Fiorina's delegates and the other delegates for the candidates that, you know, a couple here, a couple there, which could add up. Are still Carson. Right. They're still pledged to those candidates, even though Carson has come out for Trump and Christie has come out for Trump. Rubio's got the big slug of delegates. What's going to happen to those on the first ballot? Yeah. Each state has different rules on when those delegates can get released. And the rule making, Dan, right before the convention is going to be as important almost as the primaries as to where those delegates get to go when they get to change their vote and when they get released to vote their conscience. <laughs> That's when it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Be sure you're watching television this summer. And when those rules are being made, I have a feeling there's going to be some backroom deals going on. The negotiation. The old smoke-filled room deal. The negotiations have already started between sure. the leading candidates. Yeah. Because if, if he doesn't have 1237 by the middle of July, then it's going to be open season, yeah. and then it gets really like the old days. Yes. The deals made in the back rooms, yeah. who gets to vote, who gets to influence those people, uh, and, and how the deals can be arranged to, to move their pledges. That's exciting. All right, Democrat side yes, uh, is a different deal, too, because they have the super delegates, right. right? And at this point, Hillary Clinton basically has wrapped up all the super... Tell the folks at home what a super delegate yeah, is. A super mm -hmm. delegate is a very undemocratic, non a normal policy. In other words, when we are going through the campaigns on the Democratic side, it appears that in some cases Bernie's out in the lead, and in other cases Hillary's out in the lead. The reality is there are, are delegates, at large delegates, and then there are super delegates in the Democratic Party. Super delegates have been uh, given their jobs by the party. They're party loyalists, they've been uh, great Democratic supporters of the party in the past. So they weren't elected by anybody. They're not pledged to anybody. They get to vote who they want to. The establishment candidate is Hillary. So guess what? 100% of those superdelegates are lining up behind Hillary, and they weren't elected, and they're not tied to the popular vote, and it's really upsetting the Bernie Sanders supporters. Well, yeah, wouldn't you be... Absolutely. You win the entire state, but you yeah. get zero delegates. Yeah, or... or you, you're right there, and the delegate count should be equal, and then the superdelegates get to pledge, and they're coming out for Hillary almost 100 yeah. percent. So it's not a democratic process, and if I was a Bernie Sanders supporter, I would want reform in the Democratic Party. I wouldn't be surprised to see the superdelegates go away in the future. I was going to say, people sitting at home listening, if they didn't realize what a superdelegate was, I mean, this is a system that basically is rigged right. toward their favorite candidate, no matter what the election does. Yeah, and, because, and, and, and they tend to support uh, the person that's from the party, yeah. has worked with the party. Bernie is, is really an outsider. He's a socialist that runs within the Democratic Party. Right. He's not part of that machine, and so he's not picking up that kind of popular uh, superdelegate support. And those are rule changes as well that'll happen. People don't realize the rules change every four years. Yeah. The number of delegates change, how they're selected, who they are, and those are all really important things that have a lot to do with who becomes president of the United States. All right. Well, you know the Republican Party would like an open convention. I think all of us in the media would like it too because it would be interesting. It would be a great history lesson for us. Absolutely. Civics lesson. Yeah, it's, it's political science uh, broken down by the minute. Every channel will cover every second of it. Yeah. And if it becomes open, then it's going to be a floor fight the likes of which that party hasn't seen in decades. And that's what the, at least the, the traditionalists are hoping for, yeah. that want to be uh, anyone but Trump. Right. And the Trump supporters will be disenfranchised if that happens. If they get forced out, if they don't have an input, if they're not allowed to have their candidate uh, at least be part of the process, uh, it could really cut the Republican Party up into pieces. Yeah even more than it has. Yeah, exactly. All right. Barry, it's going to be a fun summer. It is. It's going to be interesting for those political junkies. This is good stuff. Barry, thank you. Great to be here with you, Dan. Do appreciate it. All right. Enjoy your day. We're going to take a little break here, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Happy Sunday. Spring forward.